But here he is. A wonderful man. I come here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. On the third and solemn occasion to salute our dearly departed friend, Don Rickard. Words alone cannot convey the grief that I feel in my heart for this wonderful man who was taken away from us all too soon. by the hand of our heavenly father. <laughs> However, <laughs> we can all take solace knowing that Don has gone and entered that big stage door in the scar. <laughs> to join the other greats from the halls and doors of show business. <laughs> Such luminaries as George M. Cohen, <laughs> Al Jolson, and Ricardo Cortez. <laughs> Gentlemen, Don Rickle shall not pass this way again, and for that we can all be great. <laughs> but let me just for a moment recount to you those last poignant days in Don's life. Before the final curtain ran down for eternity, <laughs> his lovely wife, Barbara, came to his deathbed with her new fiancé, George Bush. <laughs> Under that surface of hatred and cruelty was a layer of warmth and love. And under that layer, ladies and gentlemen, was another layer of even more hatred and cruelty. <laughs> There's much more I can say, but I have to leave. I'm doing a moral of the Griffin. And now it is the request of the family that we all get into our limousines and drive out to Don's final resting place, the Forest Lawn Animal Cemetery. <laughs> Say, Sweetie Pie, Rest in Peace. That's Mr. Charlie Callis, ladies and gentlemen. Henry Pat worked and traveled with Frank Sinatra for years, which is one of the reasons Frank went into retirement. <laughs> Very funny comedian, Mr. Pat Henry. Thank you, dear. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, there's something about Don Rickles very few people know. First of all, Don was born an only twin. <laughs> and to look at Don, you know he wasn't a very pretty baby. In fact, at birth, when the doctor held him up, he slapped him right in the face. <laughs> and when his mother saw him, she slapped the doctor in the face. As you know, Don was a bottle-fed baby. Even his mother didn't trust him up close. <laughs> and again, on the good side of all the kids in school, Don would tell him he had ESP. Unfortunately, he was trying to spell car. <laughs> You want to know what kind of a guy Don really is? He once invited Jewel Gibbons over for lunch. He served him poison ivy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very, thank you very much. As the report, Frederick and gentlemen just told you. I have never met Don Rickles. In fact, he's probably wondering what I'm do doing here. He has never even seen, never even seen. He has never seen me before. He has never heard, heard of me, and our paths have never drawn. <laughs> However, Mr. Rickles, you and I do have an indirect rela relationship. <laughs> you see, I'm fooling around with your wife. something in common. <laughs> I hope you understand, Don, that we have tried to keep this very, very discreet. <laughs> so don't tell anybody, will you? <laughs> My wife would be furious if she found out about it. <laughs> Don, I really must compliment you on your spouse, Mrs. Mrs. Pickles. <laughs> I say that because she's a real dilly. <laughs> and I must also admit you have a very lo a very lovely home. <laughs> Incidentally, you're out of scotch. <laughs> If you happen to think of it, pick up some pretzels. <laughs> you know, Don, what your wife and I love to do most? <laughs> Watching you while you're on t t while you're on t TV. <laughs> when you're on, we just laugh and ch chuckle. <laughs> and giggle, and sometimes we even turn the sound on. <laughs> and we are always sad when you fin finish your act. It means you're on your way home and I better cheese it. <laughs> Which reminds me, you're out of Velveeta too. <laughs> Don, don't, don't blame your lovely wife on, for any of this. Our getting together was all, all my doing. It's all my fault. I happen to be the one who answered her ad in the Hollywood Free Press. <laughs> Thinks that thinks very very highly of you, Don. She tells me you are a one wonderful man, and I know that you you must be to put up with all her snoring. <laughs> she tells me that since she's been Mrs. Rickles, Rickles, Rickles Th Thanksgiving. <laughs> By golly, that's what she gets for marrying the turkey. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what did I think? 
favorite comedians, Mr. Joey Bishop. When they asked me to appear on the dais for Don Rickles, I said, I don't know what to say about Don Rickles. And they said, say whatever you want to say. Okay, Don Rickles is a bedwetter. <laughs> Not only the bed, everywhere. <laughs> He's the only one on the dais with a rubber tuxedo. <laughs> I really, in my heart, I must say, I cannot believe we're paying tribute to him. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we've had big names here. <laughs> then we go to him. Well, who are we honoring next week? Prick me heat? <laughs> Somebody, I don't know a man like Dr. Jonas Salt. <laughs> a man who helps fight diseases. Why are we honoring a carrier? <laughs> and he's known for his hostility. And I ask you from the bottom of my heart, what has he to be hostile about? What can a short, paunchy, bold, old, ugly person possibly have to be hostile about? He does have a great sense of humor. I mean, not on stage. I'm talking about practical jokers, number one. You remember the time you took the safety belt off of Mickey Rooney's toilet seat? <laughs> remember that? And Mickey almost drowned? <laughs> then I found out, and this was the shocker, because I know you don't gamble in Vegas. You don't go to the track. I found out you're a bingo addict. I called your wife, Barbara. I said, Barbara, what is Don really like? And she said, every night, bingo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you all know why we are here, because we love this gentleman. Don Rickles is a fine person, a great entertainer, a wonderful father, and a great husband. In spite of what he says on stage, I know him in my heart that it's really a good egg and you all know where eggs come from. <laughs> they found an orangutan suffering with a hernia, fed him poison from a rattlesnake bite, gave him the soothing voice of a wild hyena, and he is man of the week tonight. <laughs> Don Ripples, who has the personality of a lemon taster, <laughs> is not without compassion for his fellow performer. When Peg Leg Bates was seriously ill and down on his luck, Don Rickles gave him money. He said, I know it's tough on you, Peg. Here's a few dollars to help you out till you get back on your foot. <laughs> he has suffered rejection, frustration. Only yesterday, in a moment of flirtatious, sexy attitude, he tried to pick up a woman on Hollywood and Vine. And he was chased away by the two Boy Scouts that were helping her across the street. <laughs> she hit him with a crutch. <laughs> Because you're hostile, Don. <laughs> Patting after Dean Martin, a sex symbol and a superstar who upped his prestige in the business through charm and grace. Oh. He upped his prestige, Don. Up yours. <laughs> I do a song called I'm a Nice Guy. He said, but my musical performance is a little awkward. What should I do with my hands while I'm singing? Dean, Dean said, put them over your mouth. 
in his humor, he makes some ethnic slurs. Well, once when we were all in Florida, I saw Sammy Davis Jr. water skiing through the Everglades, enjoying himself immensely. At the wheel of that boat in the broiling hot sun, pulling Sammy Davis on the water skis was Don Rickles. I had to shout my commendation. I said, Don, you're beautiful. Working so hard to entertain your little friend. I said, you're personifying brotherhood. He said, I'm baiting alligators. <laughs> Don Rickles has won many friends in many places before many groups by his philosophical observations. Before a physical fitness group, he said, if you want to look young, hang out with old people. <laughs> At a Billy Graham <laughs> revival, he said, <laughs> he said, if you want to be forgiven for your sins, the first thing you got to do is sin. <laughs> At the Naval Academy, he said, don't give up the ship, sell it. <laughs> Forget about the Indians. If they're not happy the way we treat them, let them go back where they came from. <laughs> I was going to write a song about you tonight, Don, but the notes on the piano don't go that low. <laughs> so I say to you, <laughs> blow the trumpet of brotherhood, beat the freedom drum, but don't sing along with my people or we shall not overcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dean, for that strange introduction. <laughs> Don? I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Delighted to tell Shannon to be here this evening instead of staying at home and watching Milt Chamberlain drop basketballs in her mouth. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, it really is an honor to be here tonight <laughs> to pay tribute to this truly outstanding human being, Don Rickles. Not many people know this, but Don recently volunteered to take part in a series of experiments being conducted at the UCLA Medical Center. See, they're trying out new drugs on Don to see if they're safe for rats. <laughs> I did that as myself. <laughs> but, uh... I got a laugh. The hell with the impressions. <laughs> That's what you've been saying for years, right? Why don't you go home and take a warm bath? Why don't you rub a duck drum? I've, uh... <laughs> hey, I've really been looking forward to this occasion. In fact, a few nights ago, I had a dream about Don Rickles. Just my luck. Actually, it was more a nightmare. I dreamt that all the world's major political leaders had gathered at the White House in Washington for a conference to bring peace to the world. And in my dream, Don Rickles was president of the United States. <laughs> and he was greeting them all. Now, here are some of the things that President Rickles was saying in my dream. Ah, uh, King Faisal of Saudi Arabia. So, 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 so glad you could come. Hope you find a parking place for your camel. Anyway, then, may I say something, Your Highness? And I say this from the bottom of my heart. You've got to be the ugliest king I've ever seen in my life. 
Your face was a building at Beacon then. Anyway, gang. Moxie <laughs> Tongue. Oh, I, I love you. You, 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 you. You're a wonderful little guy. You, you, you little taggy. You. <laughs> I know you got a lot on your mind, but try and remember next time. No starts on the call, huh? Fidel Castro. What are you doing here tonight, you hockey puck? <laughs> What'd you do? Get a note from the Russians saying you could take the night off? Incidentally, is that a beard or are you sticking your head under your armpit? <laughs> anyway, gang. Is, 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 is he coming towards me? Huh? If you see teeth, it's not an ivory hunt. <laughs> anyway, gang. Isn't this fun, huh, Tom? Huh? Isn't this fun staying up late and everything, huh? Isn't this great and it's better than sitting around the house discussing your next series? <laughs> anyway, gang. Hey, look who's here, all the way from the Soviet Union. Mr. and Mrs. Bresnan. Don't, 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 don't tell me. Let me guess who, which one is which. Huh? <laughs> hey, Premier Tanaka of Japan. I saw, I saw. What are you looking so scared for? You hockey puck, John Wayne's not here tonight. <laughs> hey, the last time I was in Tokyo, I met your beautiful wife and your lovely kids. And I must say, that's quite a set of Tanaka she's got there. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I awoke. The dream was over. I was awakened by the telephone. I picked it up. It was Don Rickles' agent telling me he wanted $75,000 for appearing in my dream.